Um, I'm not going to speak very much, one, because I suffer from absolutely appalling stage fright, but also because the kids have been in the pod over there and they've been hacking education. That was what we told them they had to do, is just hack education. And so we want to see what they came up with, ideally. Now, Young Rewired State, if you don't know, is a network of developers aged 18 and under who have taught themselves how to code, or they've learned how to code. But they're all pretty good coders. So um, I'm going to hand over to Isabel, who is a Young Rewired Stater who has been supporting the coders here. But she, she was in the original Young Rewired State from 2009. And she's just going to talk through her experience. So, Izzy, I don't know. I think you need to talk to that microphone. Hello. Hello. They can hear you. That's the fine. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Yay. That's, that's a good start. Right then. Um, yeah, I'm... Um, yeah, I've been involved in Young Rewired State since it first started in um, 2009. Um, I found out about it when um, living in France, bizarrely. Um, well, the power of the internet. Um, yeah, um, I found out a bit about it on Twitter. Um, yeah, and basically since then, I've really loved coming along. It's happened every year since then. I've met so many new people through it. And um, yeah, yeah. And since then, it's yeah, the network's been broadening, and yeah, now there's like yeah, because previously in the first year there were there were 50 developers scrabbled together, yeah, and um, yeah, and yeah, and basically, basically it continues to exist um, solely through sponsorship. So if you or anyone you know can offer sponsorship for this year and subsequent years, then please do get in touch. Because otherwise, yeah, because it's absolutely amazing. It's done me the world of good. So yeah, and everyone else. So yeah, that's it from me. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Um, we're going to hear from Michael now, who is just going to present for a couple of minutes what he's been. Uh, coding for the last two days. It's only really been 24 hours if you did any coding overnight. It didn't work. 12 by 10 at 600, the OCC, yeah. Yeah, okay, let's try this okay. again. Okay. Uh, okay, so I don't know how many of you have noticed this. It's been in news quite a bit, so you probably have. But um, recently, com uh, changing the IT curriculum in schools from what's essentially learning Microsoft Office in a lot of them to um, true computer science teaching has received some government support. Um, although, essentially, what they've done is just say schools can sort it out themselves. Uh, so, <laughs> the question then comes along, how do they actually do that when the current IT teachers are generally teaching Microsoft Office because they don't understand programming? Um, so, what I've done is kind of a first step towards addressing that. Um, one of the problems with teaching at the minute 
is that the IT systems don't really support what programmers would want to do because if you're programming, to start with, you may well want to use Linux. Um, that, that's another operating system like Windows, essentially. Um, and like school IT departments may well not be happy with you putting that on. So what I've done is um, built some tools to use online web servers um, really easily to like set up, say, 20 of them for a class, and each of them can have their own server to play with just for the duration of the uh, lesson. Um, I haven't had the time to put like a polished front end on it, uh, but I'll try and explain just what it does. Okay. Uh, okay. So basically what this does is it sets up four servers of a certain type. Um, th these are actually really powerful ones for no particular reason. Um, and then you, g you have to give it a few minutes just to um, like start, start working. But if we check on it now, then we should find some of them have started working already. Um, yes, so if you ignore all this technical stuff and just pick one of them which is running, um, and then we try and load it. Oh, sorry, no, it's still in here. This, this wouldn't happen in real life. This is just a, <laughs> me being an idiot, if you want the honest truth. Okay. That's better. Okay, so but what this is basically is just a textual kind of entry system. Um, like if any of you have played with the BBC Micros and so on, this, the same sort of thing, but just a more kind of modernly used version. Um, and so from here, you can play with common programming languages, say Ruby. Um, you can get in, oh, that's interesting. But anyway, with, with a bit of tweaking, as I say, this has been like a three hour project just to do. Um, you can go in and set things up. And the vital thing is, wh while the server's online, the students can do absolutely everything they want. We've a very minor tweak being needed by the um, school IT technicians because they just need to put a program on the Windows machines for them to be able to, do, able to use this rather than the considerably more effort it should actually be to try and put this onto the school machines alongside Windows or anything else for that matter. Uh, yeah. Thank okay. you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Next up, we've got Kevin and Kush. And where's Dylan? OK. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Cool. OK, hey. So um, we were really stuck for two days. So this is, we were really stuck for like half the time we had. So this has been put together really quickly. We tried to make it look as good as possible so you sort of understand what's going on. So teachers are trying to find new ways to keep kids interacted in lessons. And it's becoming really important because they're really boring. And well, <laughs> yeah. And you know, in the next couple of years, me and my peers are going to be entered into like lots of exams. And it's really important that we're, um, that we're Word gone, doesn't matter. Okay, so on another note, so on another note, I went to bar camp last year. So bar camps are user generated events where someone thinks there's so much of an expert on a topic that they can book a room in a designated time slot and uh, become like the expert and do a presentation. They can do it however they wish. Um, and other people can move from room to room at any time. So that got us thinking could we try and scale down the idea of bar camp into 
a classroom, or even scale it up all the way to an entire school. So uh, .edugrid here is a set of tools, resources, lesson plans to try and make it really easy for teachers to get in on this new sort of type of lesson. That was a bad sentence. Okay, so let me try and show you how it works. So here's what we've got together. So this is .edugrid. There are four options. I'm only going to show you one right now. So say you've already made a grid, a grid of time slots of students. You'll see it in a sec. So let's say I want to edit. I'm already logged in. My mouse isn't working. That's great. Um, hmm. Fantastic. Refresh. It, oh, it's a Mac. OK. <laughs> um, that doesn't work either. See, this is why you don't let a PC user use a Mac. Can I help him? Can I help him? Make Can it I work. Help Can I help him? Can you come on. Uh, that's, that's frozen as well. That's fine. So, s that's fine. Okay. So, Dot Edugrid uh, doesn't only have resources and lesson plans, some of which we've already sort of tried to create, but it also lets you create grids really easily by inputting, say, the number of students in your room, the number of, of teacher appointed experts. Uh, so, you can do it in a lesson, send the kids away to become an expert and come back and actually get in on this. You can create a grid to see the time slots. So scaling it down to a classroom can be as simple as having one expert per table and allowing the rest of the students to go around to the different tables while the leader goes and leads a discussion with a teacher just making sure the kids aren't talking about games or something. OK, so that's the idea of EduGrid. It's really, really easy to create grids, to manage grids, because that's the hardest part about a bar camp. Um, and also, there's resources and lesson plans. So while we're here, and we can, we might as well quickly talk about BetaFest. <laughs> Yay, self-promotion. <laughs> BetaFest is an event that some students are going to run, uh, hopefully about the Easter time, which will be a bar camp style event for kids to come along and share their knowledge and make new contacts. So for now, I'm just going to hand over to Kush for the second hack that we've come up with. Uh, yeah, we started this really, really late, and by really late, I mean about 11 o'clock this morning, um, <laughs> called EduConnect. We like to keep the whole thing the same. And um, what it is, basically, is we got this idea of, where is it? There it is. Of, um, basically, multiple choice quizzes. We were going to have a Connect. Um, first of all, we didn't get one until about 2 o'clock, and then it went fast, but we'll pretend that I have a Connect, because I'm awesome. Um, <laughs> so this is, say, the primary school maths edition. <laughs> Oh, great. I would select addition. <laughs> Why is nothing working? <laughs> and then that should have taken me onto another screen where there'd be four options. Um, I quickly realized that the question was two plus two, and I put my hand over where four is. Four. <laughs> it would select four. Next question. I think it was four plus six. I'd go and select ten. <laughs> Essentially, that was it. <laughs> We're sorry that nothing works. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, sorry. Um, but just, just to reiterate, they started actually building this software and these applications and these websites at 10.30 yesterday morning. Nothing was coded before that. So um, we are going to load up after this, and we've got two minutes to breathe. We're going to load up links to what they've built online so you can all go and have a look and explore yourselves and you'll be able to kind of chat to them and talk, talk about it. Um, so now we're going to go over to David and Josh. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I just want to go Sorry, technical problems, give us a second. I'll try and distract them while you fix it. So we had such a great plan yesterday. We were, we were going to come here. We were going to build three projects. Uh, we were going to build one, to, one yesterday, one overnight, and one today. Um, but one of us left our MacBook charger at the conference <laughs> so we couldn't carry on coding overnight. So we, uh, we crammed two of our hacks together into one, one huge project. So uh, somebody yesterday at the awards said that he had started sharing his students' work on his blog. So the students could get that feel of feedback when people comment on it, because that, that's one of the greatest things. Otherwise, they feel like their work is going to waste. 
So we thought, that's, that's good and all. There's got to be a better way of doing it, right? So we built a sharing platform for students to share their work online. Do you want to demo it? Okay. <laughs> It's probably a good thing. Cheers. Um, so, okay, here's the, here is uh, School Hub. Um, and it's basically arranged into uh, ass assignments and, well, subjects which have uh, various assignments inside them. So we'll go on subjects, and it's not, a very, not, not very many at the moment, but if we go to uh, film studies, say, there's Josh, Josh's essay on A Life in a Day. Uh, there's Josh's profile. We can see a list of, of all the most recent ones. Uh, look at the look at the profile of various people. And now let's go and add an assignment ourselves. Can you talk us through this? Because I'm going to have to type, but I can't hold the microphone. So we wanted to create a really simple mechanism for everyone to be able to add the work. They, you know, not coding or anything, just through a very simple interface. So they can add they can add text files, they can add photos, they can add videos, whatever work they're doing. So uh, pretty much across the curriculum, because you know it's it's great to share everything. Otherwise, you feel like the work's going to waste. So um, this is a history of what are you writing? Keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here's a uh, here's a relatively short essay. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that would be graded, but um, yes, in history by David Kendall. Um, so yeah, this this is one half of our hack, one half of the project that we were going to, of one of the projects we were going to build today. The second half, can I demo this as well? Yeah, sure. Cool, thanks. Was um, so. Have you all heard of Khan Academy? Right, it's great, isn't it? There's so much, there's so much video content, and you can you can learn pretty much everything, but you learn it on your own. That's the downfall. So. We, and it's, it's always so much easier to learn in other people. That's the whole reason schools exist. It's, it's so easy to learn with other people. So we decided to take Khan Academy videos, Khan Academy data, and allow people to watch them in sync. So one person becomes the leader, and maybe six or seven people can watch the same video at the same time, and they can learn together. So here is a Khan Academy video about SOPA and Piper, which is kind of an overview. Um, which has been very much in the media re uh, recently. So the idea is that people can watch the video. As soon as the video ends, there's a short quiz. Um, users have to get, uh, all of the users in the room have to get a certain percentage of those, vid of those questions correct so everyone can move on to the next video in the series and learn together. If somebody gets a couple of questions wrong, then there is a chat section below, which I don't think, it, you're using backwards scrolling, aren't you? There's a chat section below, so users can ask other users to kind of clarify details that the video didn't, you know, they didn't get from the video, because it's difficult to ask a video questions. So, yeah. Oh, I'm out of time. Okay. Well, yeah. This is a, this is our, our massive, hack thing, which didn't go exactly to plan, but, it's kind of cool. Um, so Emma, told me to kind of finish off with a little bit of info about uh, Young Rewired State. So let me ask you a question first. How many of us do you think learned how to program in school? How many, how many of the entire Young Rewired State network? There are about 150 developers in it at the minute. About 150 developers. How many of you do you think learned in school? None? You're completely correct. Yeah. Um, none of us learned to code in schools because the system at the minute isn't geared to that. It doesn't work, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the system as it currently stands isn't geared towards getting people interested in programming. It, I mean, you can, you can learn it parrot fashion, but that's not the point. We, we code because we enjoy coding, because we enjoy building things, we enjoy helping people. So I think it would be such a fantastic shift to not just teach people programming parrot fashion, to teach them and inspire them to make, to make things like this, to run hack days, to run bar camps, because that is, we found, all 150 of us, is the best way to, of learning in our experience. So, uh, when's the next Young Rewired State? It's um, the 6th to the 11th of August. 6th to the 11th of August. So, the next Young Rewired State event is the 6th to the 11th of August. We encourage you to, uh, to ask your children, sign up, come along, uh, whatever, whatever skill range. It's, it's fine by us. We can... What? 
Oh, yeah, and sponsoring, yeah. Give us money. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so absolutely encourage your children. Come along. It's, it's such a great collection of people who know what they're doing and who are learning what they're doing more than anything. And, yeah. Thank you. Young Rewire State. Thanks, Guy. Thanks, all of you. Thank you, Graham, for letting us do this. That was, that was awesome.